680 is Richard Southern joins us now. And Richard, are we finally going to see some government action to cool the Toronto housing market? The finance minister is getting together now with his provincial counterpart, as well as Mayor John Tory. Yeah, that's right. Bill Morneau, Francis, sending a letter to John Tory and uh, provincial finance minister Souza asking for an urgent meeting to discuss the housing price situation here in Ontario. And apparently he wants to meet after getting a look at those numbers we talked about yesterday. Toronto home prices up 33 percent year on year in March. So in this letter that Morneau sent to his counterparts, he said that he's concerned about the dramatic house price increases and the implications for housing affordability. In the past, Sousa has called for the federal government to raise taxes on the sale of investment properties. And John Tory recently said that he's studying the idea of a Vancouver-style vacancy tax. So those are some of the possibilities we could see. Certainly sounds, though, Francis, like they're getting set to do something with uh, housing prices just going bananas here. Well, we do know Ontario has a budget coming up, so uh, there could be could something, something in that too. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Well, you know, you want to talk about the 5 o'clock shadow next. I wondered if that was uh, about me, but uh, it's actually about Gillette, isn't it? And they're finally cutting the price of razors because they're really expensive. They are, and they're facing new competition now. So Gillette, Francis, the best a man can get, maybe not the cheapest a man can get anymore, but they're cutting the price of their razors 20%. The reason is that the Procter & Gamble-owned company is hemorrhaging market share to cheaper competitors. You know, for years, the marketing strategies for Gillette and for Schick focused on figuring out new ways to charge more for their products. Often that was, you know, adding more blades to the razors. Uh, Gillette had a 70% market share in 2010, but since then, beards have become hip. They're in vogue, and we've seen online competitors Editors like Dollar Shave Club and Harry's really disrupt the market. They're offering razors and replacement blades online for only dollars a month. Uh, Unilever uh, purchased Dollar Shave Club last month, and so Gillette's really suffering. They're slashing their prices to keep track. We care about this because you and I, as you know, we mm -hmm. have the, the nicest and perhaps only a goatees in Toronto media. I but, agree. Uh, if not in you, Canada. If not in Canada. I read a report that said the goatee's going out of style, but I said no. Uh -uh. Uh, D'Souza and I, we're bringing it back. Because we're obviously two trendy guys. We're trendsetters. So. We are trendsetters, <laughs> sir. Yes, indeed. So let me ask you, would you let your employer, and our employers, Rogers, but would you let your employer, let's say, implant a microchip in you? Because one office in Sweden is doing just that. I'm good with what, whatever Rogers wants to do, Francis. Uh, but yes, I would there's say this. no thank you. Well, it, it is a touchy issue, but there's this uh, Swedish tech startup now, and we have some pictures of it. They are indeed implanting microchips the size of a grain of rice in their workers. What they do is they open doors, they operate printers, you can buy a smoothie in the cafeteria with it. kind of works like your security card does now. Uh, it's not required by the employer, but apparently a lot of the employees there are going for it. It does raise security and privacy concerns. Of course, the data generated by it lets the company know where you've been and what you've been doing. Yeah, I'd still say no thank you. Yeah, I'm Just let me that. use my phone to open the door. That would be easier. Well, we're paying a lot more than we have to when we eat out at uh, restaurants, and you're looking at some of the items with the biggest markups. Yeah, I mean, restaurants have to mark up their food because they have overhead, they want to make a profit, but some dishes uh, we're paying through the nose for more than others. So uh, one, of the, um, one of the things we're really paying for is burritos. The average uh, cost of the ingredients of a burrito is about two bucks. They sell that for an average of nine dollars, meaning the markup on that big burrito you had for lunch is 346 percent. Western omelet, ham, egg, and cheese. Ingredients cost about a buck 35. Sell that for nine dollars. It's a 566 percent markup. Nothing comes close to pizza, apparently. Average ingredients for a meat pie, a buck 90. Sell it for about 14. It's a 636 percent markup. Add a slice of cheese to your burger. Uh, you're getting dinged 470 percent on the markup for that. And guacamole, another thing that restaurants are making big money on, Francis. Guacamole. I would think fries as well. Yeah, yeah, potato in Cheap, what cost? Not too much. Them, yep. You know, and then you serve them up at a big price. Absolutely. Well, the Masters Golf Tournament gets underway today, and there's not much food markup there, though. No, this is crazy. So it's hard to get into the Masters. You sort of have to apply for years and years. But once you're in, take a look at some of these prices. Uh, of course, they're famous for their pimento cheese sandwich. Sells for just a buck fifty wow. or two dollars Canadian at the today's exchange. A club sandwich for two fifty. Francis, a domestic beer for just $3 at the Masters and a bag of chip for just a dollar. So cheap food there at that tournament that's getting underway today. Yeah, except those are in U.S. prices. So for us, it's like seven, eight, nine, fifteen. dollars Yeah, it's not quite as good, but still <laughs> no. three bucks for a beer. We'll take it's that. It's true. No kidding. Thank you, Richard.